Okay, welcome back. Here we are at the uh, at the full keyboard. So let's uh, let's set up a quick little pattern. Two six two five. So I got a brand new nothing pattern. Now, as I said before, I don't want that slider. I want that slider down. Now, so now if these sliders are up, every time you use a slider, as you can see, it's on. 1 through 8. If I was on here, I'd be doing the other ones. Every time I use a slider, it actually makes a pattern. So I'm making a pattern on 9 that I don't want. So I'm going to turn these all off, the sliders down, all the buttons off. Make sure, you're, make sure you get used to what these buttons are. If you see a big line there, you know you're not in a step sequencer, so it doesn't affect. These only affect this bottom panel on whatever function you're on up here, solo, hex, drawbar, organ, drawbar, organ. Now what I just did doesn't affect a step sequencer. So actually, if you're, if you're already on step sequencer ready to write, you can go ahead and return all, the, all these. You gotta move them, you gotta move every one because it's digital, it has to catch and then move. So I did it on the draw bar, draw bar organ, which doesn't hurt anything. Now when I switch down here, I haven't added anything to it. Little trick. So now I start the step sequence. If there's nothing there, we're going to use our part numbers and start at eight. And we're going to just make that plain kick, snare, move over to nine, channel nine, move over to ten. And there we have our quick pattern. Now what you're hearing here is the two different note numbers. So on one through eight, one through eight fixes this one. There's two options on, on sliders. We got the stick, snare, And let's see what we got here. So we just added the stick. Now to, uh, to illustrate a little better, I think I'm going to add a little bit of a groove or to the uh, the hi hat. Now I put that. Oh, now you want to put an open hi hat in here. I got this set on nine through sixteen, so I'm going to take sixteen, slide that up, and I just got the open hi hat. If I want that on up on eight, I can do that too, or I don't want it. I actually only want it at the very end. Okay, so going to the mixer, I'm going to take that. Stick, turn the volume down, just so it's not so annoying, and And just uh, just the volume is up a little bit, and let's go ahead and finish this up with some uh, some uh, padding, so that we can get that in there. So I'm going to take the stick, pan that out, and I'm going to take the hi hat, pan that out. And let's. Uh, down to some reverb. I'm going to put a nice heavy reverb on a stick. 
and exit mixer. And there's our, our new mixer settings. And we can write that now. Enter. Yes. So I got a new sequence on user 26. A very basic sequence. So let's uh, let's see if we can humanize this a little more. Let's go to the hi hat, and we're going to use the draw bars to run. Let's see, in you have two basic on and off. Off is adjusting instruments. I just put a open hi hat on eight and turned it off. This is going to adjust volume levels. Now every time you move the volume slider or the other slider, it automatically turns it on. So here's the volume levels, but I, I lost my pattern. So if you want to use those after the pattern's over, so you see I lost the pattern. I lost the pattern because I just used every slider. If you already have a pattern you like and you want to adjust the volume of each one, you got to be very careful and do it one at a time. Unfortunate. Either that, or set your volume levels first, then set your pattern. Either way, it's kind of difficult. So what do we do? We've screwed it up. But again, explanation point tells me uh, I've done that after I wrote it. So I'm going to bring all these sliders back down to neutral. Just turn everything off. And all I have to do is go from 2.6 to 2.7, back to 2.6, and... Because I hadn't saved it yet, the changes I made are not saved, so all I have to do is move out, move back, and we're back to our original pattern. Now let's do the volume changes, and be careful that we only do it on... And what you see is it, it wasn't volume levels. I forgot to push that button. So now let's try the volumes. And there we have different volume levels. And now that we adjusted that, we can adjust the overall volume level. in the mixer. So I adjust the volume levels between those three tracks or three channels. 8, 9, 10. That 8, 9, 10 is it's the only ones working right now, only ones we got running. And that's a little thing on the sliders. Now, let's put a pitched instrument in on here. 
So let's go to channel 11 and is open. What's on channel 11? I gotta hit my mixer to find out. And I have to change my mixer to tone and it happens to be just another drum set. So I'm on tone, which means I, these are active now for changing. So let's put a synth in there. Using my octave shift button here to find a good octave. Okay. So I got my instrument picked out. I just need to uh, go to edit. Track or step edit and enter. So we armed. And back to the mixer, because I, I think I, that's just an octave too high. So let's, let's find our course tune. And back to the tone. Now that I got that pattern in there. As I go through the tones, try to find something that sounds better. And back to the mixer volume. And maybe some reverb on there. So now we have our new pitched pattern. So with key shift, let's turn key shift on and see if we got, let's uh, exit out of everything and now key shift only works in this in between here and here. And it's not working. Again, we, we did we gotta go through the edit menu, track parameters, and turn it on. So we got key shift right there. Enter, enable is off. So it needs to be turned on. So a lot of you are probably going, why isn't this key shift working? It has to be turned on. Let's try it. So, on performance, so that's the tone I got selected under performance. So now, And there we have our pitched instrument. Now, for those of you who are keyboardists, then what we have is a, we can use the sliders to make the pitch. So let's make sure we're on, run our 
Nothing's happening. What happened? Again, look at this display. When I switched, when I went to performance and I made sure I got the, the correct instrument I wanted for my performance, it switched to hex layer. So, back down to sequencer, and now let's see what happens. Now, I'm only using the sliders that are on this pattern. Now that one I accidentally got, so here we go. And again, like I said, let's. Uh, I'm going to save, or I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to show you. Watch what happens when I move a slider that's not there. It's all automatically going to arm those. But you can still turn them off. Okay, so maybe I like that, and I'm going to try and... But the trouble is now, it's been pitched uh, away from the, the C minor scale that I wrote it in. So, okay, now that we have our new pattern, let's go through and try out the performance. So, So as you can see, I have the hex layer turned on, which means which means the sliders are now controlling the hex layer, but I have step sequencer selected. So It's going to be tricky and switch from the hex layer to the step sequence, turn the key shift on, 
So, so I could make a key shift, but we never wrote in to turn that on. So on our sequence, edit, down to track parameters, enter, key shift, enable is off. Turn that on. Now let's write that key shift in there. Save. Now the key shift is working. So now you know how to run the performance. These can be shifted so that you can control your performance as it happens. So, And that's a much deeper venture into the Casio's Step Sequencer. Hope this helps you out a lot, and I'll see you next time.